Okay, day six of Advent of Code done with SQL. Um, this one was really fun because it has some performance pathologies uh, which forced me to change my solution, which is fun. Um, so uh, on day six, um, you get an input, which is a set of integers, each one representing a fish, and then the number of days until that fish duplicates. So um, after four days, because it's uh, zero index, after four days here for the three, um, it actually splits into two fish and then resets a respawn timer um, to six. Um, the new fish gets eight. So I think this graphic does a really good job. You can see if we just look at fish one, it goes three, two, one, zero, six, down to zero, six. And then, but each time it hits zero, um, it's spawning a new fish. So if we look at one, because it's the first one to spawn, we go one, zero, six, but when it hits zero, it spawns a new fish with eight and that goes down to zero, and then it goes to six, and then that spawns a new one with eight. Um, so the first time they spawn, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, and the question is, after 18 days, uh, after 80 days, how many fish uh, will there be in total? Uh, so here is my solution. So here's my solution for day six, uh, part one. So I've been looking to use a recursive common table expression uh, every single day. I've just wanted to use that as one of the solutions and I decided uh, this would be a good place to use it. Um, so that is what I initially did. Um, so let's just talk about what I do here. Um, so first I pull in the inputs. Um, unfortunately the inputs are in the single line so this creates a single row in, in the table with just the line. So the first thing I do is actually take these inputs uh, and then put them each in a table. So we could see here that the first thing I do is just take that input, um, split it by commas, turn it into rows, uh, and then we have the inputs in order. Um, I call them timers because they're respawn timers. Um, the lateral unnest thing I've done about two or three days in a row, roughly, so all my other videos talk about that. Um, but that's the first thing you do. So we now have the timers, and now it's about iterating these timers in order to get uh, new spawns. So to get the spawns, I decided to use a recursive common table expression. A recursive common table expression, or CTE, lets you reference this, the CTE you make, so spawn. It lets you reference that inside the definition. Uh, and the format is usually uh, a query, a union, and then another query. The top query is a base case, how it starts iterating. And then below is the recursive case with a terminating clause for how it'll not loop forever. So my base case here is I actually just select all the timers from that initial table I made with the number of days remaining um, that I could use to count uh, the iteration. And my recursive case is subtracting the days remaining uh, and then iterating as long as there are more than zero days remaining. Um, and then what I'm doing here is finding a new timer where uh, we're pulling from the previous table and the new, new spawn timer value is in most cases, timer minus one. But in the case that the timer is already zero, then we actually split. So we have we split into uh, one row that has six, the pre-existing spawn, and then the new spawn, which has eight, because its first timer is, uh, is an eight. So by doing that, I generate, uh, by using the unnest here with that array, I generate two rows here instead of one, um, or one row. So that's where the split happens, is this lateral unnest. And in that, I have this like hugely divergent recursive table. It generates a ton of rows. And then what I do at the end is just count the number of rows, which equates to a fish, when there's zero days remaining. Um, and if I run this, then you can see I get the sample answer. I just want to show what this recursive CT is generating. So I'm going to do a query from the result table where the days remaining is 16, so not zero, uh, just so you can see what it looks like. And here's what that looks like if you run it. So at 16 days remaining, there's a fish with a two, a four, a four, a six, a four, you know, these each represent a fish and this is run on the uh, input set. So that got us our answer for part one. Um, part two is just extending the 80 days to 256 days. And uh, just looking at this, I already had a feeling that what I did was not going to work um, because this is growing uh, exponentially, and uh, this might just take forever. 
So the first thing I did was just run my old solution and just change this 80 here, right here to 256. Um, and then I went and did something else. I came back about 30 minutes later and it was still running and I had no idea. Uh, there's no progress. So I had no idea where it was. I knew this solution was naive. It wasn't the best way to do it, but I was hoping I could just brute force and get away with it. But after 30 minutes, I decided um, I should do something else. So the main thing that I decided to do, I decided to make two changes in order to make this a lot faster. Um, right now, my naive query is generating one row for every single fish. So you can see that there's two fish here, um, and then there's two rows with zeros. Um, and and when that splits, it's going to split into four rows. And so instead of doing that, I thought, okay, let's have days remaining, the timer, and then a count. So we have one row for each timer, and this will just say there's two zeros. Um, and then that'll spawn into two eighths. And that way we'll keep it down to a minimum number of rows. The issue is that calculating you cannot calculate aggregates within a recursive CTE um, so I could calculate the number of counts after this recursive thing or before it um, in part of the input but I can't do it while iterating in here and so there's potentially a better solution than this but what I decided to do then was part two was to slice my inputs into 64 day slices. Um, so this is all the way down this file is just the same thing repeating, a copy and pasted. Um, but I start at 256 days and I only iterate over 64. And then I do the aggregate count. So I sort of recollapse the data and then I do it again. Then I spawn the second time and then I do it from 192 to 128, so another 64-bit slice, and I continue doing this until zero. Um, and this ended up creating the result in about 800 milliseconds, rather than you know an unknown amount of time where 30 minutes wasn't any, wasn't even enough with the previous solution. So here's the answer to part two. You can see that it took about 800 milliseconds to run uh, the full 256-day cycle using this uh, slicing technique, where I sliced it into four. Um, 64 day chunks. I don't know if there's a better way to do this using one CTE um, because I can't use the aggregates there, uh, but this ended up working pretty well. So it required minimal changes, just a lot of copy and paste for part two.